Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Jérôme Duberry from the Geneva Graduate Institute. I will present a paper on AI democracy, and I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to participate in this conference. The title of my paper is Exploring the Fragile Cohabitation of AI and Democracy. While the early developments of e-democracy and e-participation can be traced back to the end of the 20th century and the growing use of the internet, the availability of big data by public institutions through open source policies, the growing adoption of smartphones and mobile applications by citizens, as well as the increased capacity of public administrations to analyze big data have enabled the emergence of new approaches to e-democracy and e-participation. Online opinion polls, town hall meetings, and discussion lists of the 90s and 2000s have evolved into new generations of policy-making tools driven by the most recent developments in information and communication technologies, or ICTs. The digital turn in the citizen-government relation is a response to a demand to digitize public action and increase its efficiency, a call for greater citizen participation in policy-making processes, and political will to make public administration data available. A large variety of technologies allow, allows leveraging open data and sometimes open source software to address challenges that may be invisible to or neglect neglected by government in a collaborative, problem-centered way. Online platforms, advanced simulation websites, and serious gaming tools are progressively used on a larger scale. These new tools allow, among other things, for citizens to be more actively engaged in the nitty-gritty of policy making, particularly in the way policies are evaluated and how new options and alternatives are explored. The white paper on artificial intelligence, a European approach to excellence and trust, argues that, and I quote, it is essential that public administrations, hospitals, utility and transport services, financial supervisors, and other areas of public interest rapidly begin to deploy products and services that rely on AI in their activities." End of quote. Hence, it is crucial for states and public institutions to harness its power. AI is a term that may be difficult to define and it covers many technologies that have evolved over the last decades. This paper focuses on current uses of AI, meaning artificial narrow intelligence. It acknowledges that AI is still a relatively recent and not mature technology. This paper adopts the following definition from a report published by the European Union's Joint Research Center to qualify the use of AI by governments in Europe. Quote, AI is a generic term that refers to any machine or algorithm that is capable of observing its environment, learning, and based on this knowledge and experience, gained, taking an intelligence actions of proposing decisions. There are many different technologies that fall under this broad definition. At the moment, machine learning techniques are the most widely used." End of quote. AI offers indeed promises, promising opportunities to contribute to the well-being of current and future societies. For instance, it can enhance e-government services, the protection of biodiversity, climate modeling, and the combat against COVID-19 pandemic, to name only few. However, adopting this new technology raises also concerns. In this context, the literature on AI tends to focus on the governance of these technologies more than the governance with these technologies. 
The EU has positioned itself as a leader in responsible AI and supports many initiatives to ensure that its development and applications are aligned with human rights and democratic principles. After more than 20 years of research and practice in the field of digital government and government transformation through ICT-based reforms, it is well recognized that existing structures will need to be transformed to take full advantage of the benefits offered by technology. AI makes no exception. Given the increasing investment by governments in this technology, as well as the excessively techno-optimistic stance that some governments have adopted, and the power imbalance between tech industrial conglomerates and the public interest, it is important to examine the implications of such deployment for democracy and the trust that citizens place in public institutions. This paper first provides an overview of the various dimensions of AI use in the context of citizen-government relations, such as AI as a tool for data-driven government decision-making, AI in e-government, and AI in public services. After introducing these dimensions, this paper explores their implications, raising questions of whether and how AI can place citizens in a position to take on risks involuntarily and consequently challenge the trust placed by citizens in democratic processes. The introduction of AI in the citizen-government relation presents many opportunities, but also many risks. On the one hand, states depend more and more on these digital infrastructures to perform certain sovereign tasks, including responding to global crisis. On the other hand, states must ensure the security of their populations. When giving such an important role to the private interest running the sensitive data, state may jeopardize not only the credibility of their efforts to ensure the protection of their citizens, but also their social legitimacy. AI remains indeed an immature technology, sometimes unreliable, often opaque, with various degrees of agency. When introducing or allowing the use of this technology in democratic processes, governments also introduce a degree of uncertainty and vulnerability. In other words, using AI in democratic processes is not neutral and may have long-lasting negative effects on the trust that citizens place in their governments and institutions. Transparency and accountability of policymaking and governance mechanisms, as well as in their own capacity to have a meaningful impact in this process. Civil society particularly individual citizens, take a risk when their interaction with governments or their participation in policymaking is mediated by AI. Tulloch and Lupton argue that voluntary risk-taking is this, and I quote, activity in which individuals engage and is perceived by them to be, to be in some sense risky, but is undertaken deliberately from choice. End of quote. This definition highlights three important elements. The consciousness that one is taking a risk. The capacity or the agency to make a decision to take the risk. And of course, the voluntary aspect of the decision, which is shaped by social conditions to some extent. In the, con in the context of constant technological, environmental, and social transformations, it is crucial for citizens to develop their capacity to perceive and respond to risk. However, the AI mediation of governance mechanisms remains often blurry, if not opaque, to citizens. This leads to, the, to question the voluntary aspect of the risk-taking role of civil society. Hence, there is a dire need for capacity building, both digital skills and literacy, 
to empower civil society and in particular individual, individual citizens so that they can adapt and benefit from these new AI mediated citizen government relations. Now, what avenues to explore in terms of solutions? First, I would argue that the precautionary principle should be applied to any AI development in the sensitive context of the expression of popular sovereignty. And I mean here citizen consultations, e-voting and policy making through sandboxing. This would both send a clear message of security and trust to the population and ensure that negative impacts and potential abuses are mitigated. It would also grant governments additional time to develop and test explanatory narratives for the population. Given the rapid pace of technology development and implementation, as well as innovation in the private sector, sandboxing can realistically only become standard if governments take their responsibility to protect popular sovereignty and enforce these sandboxing, sandboxing policies. The risk assessment proposed in the latest AI regulation proposals are not enough. Unlike rapid technology development, political, social and environmental impacts can be long term and very difficult to, pro to predict. Sandboxing and the inclusion of multiple stakeholders in the testing phase, as well as in the design phase of the technology, can reveal useful and to identify and mitigate potentially harmful impacts. Furthermore, AI applications in the context of the expression of popular sovereignty should be developed entirely in-house by public institutions and in open access in order to ensure control, autonomy, transparency and accountability of the entire governance process. It is true that governments already rely on technology solutions developed by the private sector to manage sensitive data, IT support, cybersecurity, among others. However, it would be advisable to consult the population and particularly the most affected stakeholder on which governments and government services and operations should be developed entirely in-house. should ask them these questions. Finally, the question arises as to who to include and how in the development of these technologies that play an increasing role in the relation between citizen and government. It is crucial to involve the population in all the stages of the development process of any new AI-based public service that would have a direct or indirect bearing on the expression of popular sovereignty. This would ensure ownership, avoid negative impact on certain populations, address new needs and strengthen trust in public action. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to answer any question by email or any other format you may have. And I wish you a pleasant day.